The fascial system. How many of you guys have heard of fascia? Good. Good. So this is your connective tissue. This is your connective tissue. It's gotten a lot more popular over the last few years. A lot more research is being done, but we're going to keep it simple today. A ligament. A ligament attaches what to what? Bone to bone. Wait a second. We already saw something that was bone to bone. What was that? Joints are bone to bone, which means if a ligament attaches bone to bone, then it does what? Supports joints. So we're going to find ligaments at every joint because that's what helps keep them together. Tendons. What do tendons do? Connect what to what? Muscle to bone. So generally speaking, muscles don't attach to bones. Tendons attach to bones. So muscles pull on tendons, which then moves bones at a joint, which is supported by ligaments. ligaments. <laughs> okay, just put it all together. Right, give me an ex this is the Achilles tendon. Right, you guys all know where your Achilles tendon is? All right, we'll do a little flash forward here. What muscles does the Achilles tendon attach to the calcaneus, the heel bone? Soleus and gastroc, good. So the Achilles tendon is a big tendon that takes my calf and basically attaches it to my calcaneus. You guys got that? All right, fascia. When we use the term fascia without using the term as like a, a global thing, usually we're talking about sheets of connective tissue. Right? So you have things like the epimecium that covers the muscles right, and gives them shape. You guys remember epimecium, endomecium, and paramecium? Mm -hmm. All right. I won't quiz you too hard on that. But like the S epimecium is just a big sheet of fascia that shapes muscles. This fascia right here, right? This very thick fascia. At least that's what I tell people. It's not fat. It's just fascia. <laughs> All right? Why, why would I have connective tissue over this area? Yeah, I mean, is, is connective tissue weak or strong stuff? Strong. strong. It's not nearly as elastic as muscle tissue. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you have connective tissue, which is a little less elastic, a little bit more resistant over my abdominal cavity to protect maybe my internal organs. That would be probably a good thing, right? So we have my internal organs here to protect. What is, my, what is this area of my body lacking that this area of my body has? Uh, ribs. So my thoracic spine is much more stable because of my rib cage and all the bony attachments. Another thing that this fascia does is it helps protect my lumbar spine a little bit by keeping me from doing what? Yeah, it, like it helps, helps resist that motion a little bit. It gives me a little bit more stability. And there's actually some fascia on the other side too, right? We saw this picture. Anybody know what this is called? Your thoracolumbar fascia? You guys have seen that in every picture. I'm not sure you knew it had a name. But yeah, that fascia is there for a reason. It helps stabilize the lumbar spine as well. Kind of interesting that we have this corset of connective tissue where we lack bony support, right? And there's fascia all over the body. There's definitely connective tissue all over the body supporting us, giving us shape, protecting internal organs, and of course, transmitting force. So a little deeper into our educations, we'll see where some, some of these fascial sheaths are connections for multiple muscles, transferring force from one to another. Your thoracolumbar fascia? connects your glutes to your lats. That's an interesting combination of muscles. You think that would help transfer force between your lower and upper extremity? Is that important? Sure, do you pull open a door with just your arms? No, no you gotta push from your legs and use your arm. 